Imagine plugging into new experiences, vast reams of data, an entire library right inside your head. This is the real cyborg revolution, a brand new landscape of the mind. It could transform us. It could overwhelm us. Science fiction has returned again and again to this murder of man and machine with fascination and fear. The cyborg, metallically altered, with mechanisms inside the flesh. No wonder the idea of a chip in the brain can make your skin crawl. What about the whole business of causing cancer? Huh? What about the possibility of an, of an immune reaction? I'm not going to stick one of these things in my head until one million other people have. I mean, the same thing with laser eye surgery, for heaven's sake. Now it's being done on street corners. You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to stick my eye under a laser beam until one million other people have done it. As we enter a period when we can, in very meaningful ways, manipulate our biology, either genetically or technologically or pharmacologically, uh, there is going to be a, a significant conflict because many people will see this as the invasion of the inhuman, that we're sort of destroying all of the values and things that we, that we hold so dear. But believe it or not, chip implants for the general public are not that far off. One day soon, your body may have its own staff of built-in doctors performing constant checkups to make sure you stay healthy. The most likely uh, initial wave of such devices will be devices that monitor us in one way or another. Just something that is monitoring our, our heartbeat all the time, that is detecting arrhythmias and dialing the hospital immediately hooked up with a, a GPS device that knows where we are at every instant. These kinds of things will really change our sense of the way we live, and it will change our ideas about risk. I can imagine a, a point where people will feel very vulnerable if they aren't monitored in that way, if their whereabouts is not known at all times. Putting chips inside your body that are stationary uh, has been done already for many years, like pacemakers. Um, you can imagine uh, surgically implanted hearing aids. There already are such things. Uh, putting something under your skin that regulates your insulin. So as the, as the capability of these chips that you could have put in improves, the possibilities explode uh, with technology like MEMS, where you put little micro machines, uh, miniaturized versions of what have traditionally been very, very large machines sense their environment and, and control fluids, uh, amazing things become possible. And the more the technology shrinks, the more amazing the possibilities are. Imagine a time in the not too distant future. A young woman is pulled from a burning car. Carbon dioxide from the smoke has shut her breathing down. Luckily, the rescue squad has a secret weapon. It's not medicine, but a solution of miniature medical robots. millions of tiny computerized devices, almost too small to be detected. They make their way through the arteries into the smallest of blood vessels on a fantastic voyage to cure from within. This is a device called a respericite. Its mission to release oxygen molecules into the blood and sop up the carbon dioxide, allowing the body to breathe freely once again. 
One day, such tiny robots may be the vanguard of an army of miniature medical warriors that seek out disease cells and kill them one by one. This incredible shrinking universe is being invented right now by a handful of scientists working at the limits of microengineering. At the forefront is Mark Reed from Yale University. He is designing a whole new kind of computer chip that may transform technology and our bodies along the way. So this is a microprocessor. This is the heart of a computer today. About a one inch square sliver of silicon with all the, on the order of a million transistors are all put onto this surface. The new technology that we have on being able to do nanoscale and molecular sized systems is to be able to make the devices so small that we can pack a million, million devices on this and have the millions of time more computer power in the same amount of area. A million times smaller, a million times more powerful. It's a computer based not on wire circuits, but molecules, not on mechanical switches, but chemical reactions. They're building it right now in Reed's lab. In fact, it actually builds itself in a process called self-assembly. It's the easy bake method of computer design. Just throw together some chemicals and let them do the work. Reed's team starts by placing a special compound into a beaker and mixing it up. No expensive factory, no assembly line, just a few billion molecules acting naturally. A silicon computer chip serves as the foundation of the experiment. It's placed in the solution and the molecules assemble onto it. The components of Mark Reed's new computer are so small, they are almost impossible to see even with a high-powered microscope. Here's how it works. The test chip on which it will assemble has 50 tiny gold pads, each one smaller than a grain of dust. The molecules seek out the gold pads. They attach and stand upright like countless tiny individual wires. A layer of gold molecules is added on top to complete the circuit. Reed sends a current of electricity through. The device is in the on position. Another charge blocks the circuit, switching it off. This on-off sequence, corresponding to the ones and zeros at the heart of any computer calculation, has staggered the world of computer research. It has the ability to move off the platform of silicon, being able to do this processing like you do film, where you roll it through vats and be able to put it on flexible substrates, be able to integrate the electronics in virtually anything you can think of. This is the potential of the coming years. Computers so tiny they blend into our world. So powerful they can change it. The performance of computers historically has doubled about every 18 months, which means over the next 30 years we'd get about a factor of a million uh, times improvement. It's not a numerical change, it's a quantitative change. That's the difference between crawling in a jet plane or something, right? I, it, a jet plane doesn't just get me from here to there faster, it changes geography, it changes trade, it changes commerce, it changes the world. <laughs>